Well, welcome everyone. This is Jeannie White for Social Connections on Passionate World Talk Radio. And we are doing something a little different tonight. I have Jesse Wurzel on and Christina Turner. And we're going to do like little shot videos of um, different subjects to talk about. But it'd be good to, for everyone to see who's talking and, and what we're talking about. This is just another ex exploring another way uh, to bring this message out to uh, the universe. So I want to welcome Bessie Wurzel and Christina Turner, and I'm going to turn it over to you two. Welcome, two of you, really. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. Yeah. Christina. Yeah. Go ahead, Betsy. Yes, yeah, so we'll talk about uh, support groups. Uh, Christina has a group. That's how I met Christina. And I have my kick Alzheimer's ass. I'm in many support groups. I'm a moderator. I'm an administrator and other support groups. And I know what Ginny was talking about, we talked about this briefly on Wednesday, is the bullying that goes on, the judgment that goes on. The new caregivers are asking questions that us old <laughs> caregivers know. Sometimes I think us seasoned ones get a little jaded and we expect people to know this and they don't. And this is why they're asking questions. And then you have people who just are judgmental and will just jump down someone's throat. They're looking for a fight. You have people who are trolls that come on a Facebook group. They're not even caregivers. They just want to cause trouble. You have people who are just running on adrenaline and they are stressed out. So when they vent, they just go off the wall. I understand, Christina, what you mean that, you know, you can teach education, you can uh, tell somebody what to do, give them advice, and they won't listen. And some people will complain if you're hanging with a new rope, right? Um, they're just, I don't know what they're looking for. I, some people really are just energy drainers, I call them. They will just suck the life out of you. I avoid those people. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I have to protect myself right. and protect my energy. So this, well, I won't even engage. Uh, very seldom will I engage. I might say something, but I, I can't waste my time and energy when somebody else really desperately needs mm. advice. Mm. What do you think, Christina? <laughs> I, I would tend to agree. I think that there are, you mentioned that there are sometimes trolls and there are, there are people that will join a group with an ulterior motive. They are either looking to, to gather a bunch of people that will be their followers in another group, or they're looking to promote a book sale or um, a blog, something that is that they're vested in that they want to promote. And not all of our support groups are geared to allow that or to want to allow that. Um, education is one thing. I, um, I'm an administrator of another group um, that Betsy is also a member of, and we really do not encourage people like that to come in. I, I, I've you know, had little standoffs here and there with different people because I wanna know what their motives are. I have made a promise. Our, this particular group got started uh, a couple of years ago and soon after it got started uh, or soon before right before it got started the people that we were in a group with wanted to start charging all of us to be in this group and so we broke away we formed this new group we've we've grown we're you know well over 450 or 60 people um, but we don't want that same kind of thing and the original people that join with us Betsy as well uh, they, they want their protection. They want to know that they're not going to be sold down the river and that no one is going to ask them for specifics um, about their people or that they're not going to be asked for money or that they're not going to be shown up somewhere else on uh, YouTube or something without permission. So that is an important part of, uh, I think, monitoring groups because you can kind of screen people as they come into the group want to become a member but you don't always know that that's going to happen you know sometimes they're a little on the sly side so that is a problem and i think as far as the older season people i think part of the reason that they feel maybe jaded as betsy said is because uh we've got new people coming on all the time 
So it's hard to remember when you have that many people who's new and who's new to caregiving. They may be new to the group, but maybe they're also brand new to caregiving. And so it, it puts everybody at an advantage and yet some people at a disadvantage. And it's hard to sift through all that unless you've really got hours worth of, of time to devote to it. And Betsy's still caregiving. I'm still trying to figure out a life and, and you know, I've got other things going on. So it does take a lot of time and it is a difficult, difficult job sometimes. And some, Betsy's right. Some people just want to come in, come on and vent and that's okay. That's what private secure groups are for. But some people want to come on and vent every single day and never be happy no matter what is offered to them. You know, they won't even take your offering. So then you, like Betsy, you go, well, I don't have energy for those people. And it's sad, but true. Yes. What do you think, Betsy? What do you want to put that? Yes. I, I've come to a conclusion. Maybe I am a little jaded myself at times. I just don't have the patience and the energy for miserable people who want to be miserable, who want to wallow in self-pity. Everybody has to come to the uh, place in their life where they have to say, I can't let this disease defeat me. And it's a mindset. You know that, Jeannie, you know that, Christina. Mm -hmm. People have to learn that for themselves. I can't teach somebody that, just like somebody can't teach me that. I had to learn it for myself. And I used to think our friend Marcia Burr, and Marcia knows I love her. She would talk about the happy place. And I thought she was nuts. And I told her so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a comedy here. Like, what do you mean, a happy place? And I didn't get it. And it took me a while to get it, and Marcia was right. But I had to learn for myself. Marcia couldn't teach that to me. And Marcia and I were in the same groups, which is really funny. <laughs> and I had to learn for myself. And that's what people need to do. But I didn't sit there and wallow in self pity either. And I recommend really for people go for therapy, go for counseling. If you don't have Go to your local community health care center in town. Oh. And oh, where did Christina go to? We, we, she must, she dropped, but hopefully she'll come back on. So just continue. <laughs> <laughs> and just, um, or go to a place for sliding scale, but nobody else can make you happy but yourself. Right. And this is what people have to come to terms with. They need to stop wallowing in their self-pity. And sometimes I just don't have the patience for that. Well, it, it's, it's difficult because you don't know who's coming in and what, what right. are the, where are they in their journey. Um, I, I, like we talked before, I think people forget these new caregivers coming on. They're just looking for um, some advice or some knowledge that's going on. And, and why do we join these groups in the first place? And, you know, you join because you want a safe haven. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, some of these older caregivers, I don't want to say it that way, but, you know, they've been through it. But sometimes you forget that you've been through it, but you came on yourself at one point in time and you didn't know anything at that moment, but there was a caregiver that was listening to you. I think sometimes we forget that piece. Yes. Know, about it. Do you think? Yes. Sometimes we forget. That the new ones, but the newbies, I call them, don't know. They don't realize that their loved ones can't adjust to their world. They have to adjust to their loved one's world. And that they will forget holidays and birthdays, anniversaries. And they have to adapt to their loved one's situation. We take that for granted because we know that now. But we didn't know that. I didn't know that in the very beginning and i wish there was seasoned veterans who would have helped me way back when i wish there was a show like yours Jeannie, 
way back when to help me. And I went nuts joining Facebook four, five years ago now it is because I was without support for 14 years. And I know what it's like to be alone. And I don't want anyone to feel alone. And I asked a lot of questions. I must have jumped up crazy. <laughs> I think Christine is trying to come back on again. I, I, um, I, I see her phone here. Christine, are you here? I'm trying to come on with my phone. My, my computer crashed. I don't know why. That's and okay. I can't, I can't get a visual. Yeah, that, but as long as you can hear your voice, that'll be okay for this time around, all right? Don't yeah, get, no problem. Just do that. We were just talking about, you know, why people join uh, uh, different support groups. And um, sometimes, you know, we have seasoned caregivers and uh, they seem to sometimes get forgetful on why they joined the group. And when they started, there was a caregiver that listened to them. And I think sometimes you forget that. That someone helped you when you be, when you were coming on. How do you think about that, Christina? Okay. I'm I'm not real. I I'm kind of on the fence and off the fence about that. I mean, I I'm not caring for anybody now. I haven't cared for anybody actual physically cared for anybody in one year. But mm -hmm. I'm still just as devoted to the cause as Bessie is. I, you know, I still try to be active in this um, area, this arena, as often as I can. Uh, through you, through trying to, you know, talk with congressmen, through right. writing, through educating local people. Mm -hmm. Every chance and everywhere I go or get, I try to give somebody some education. And um, I think that some people, may, maybe they do, some of the seasoned people, maybe they do forget. But the problem is, is that we have all these different kind of people coming on every day. And sometimes they're a brand new person. Sometimes they've got a different kind of dementia. And so somebody else that's not familiar with um, Lewy body, and they're only familiar with vascular, they're expecting in their mind, because all they know is vascular, right. that they're trying to be helpful when the two are completely different. They're all pretty intolerable and pretty painful for both patient, person, and the family, but they're not the same. And that's true of early onset. It's true of, uh, you know, Parkinson's with dementia. It's true of all of our our problems is that we're all coming from a little bit different place and even people two identical Alzheimer's two identical vasculars we all are going to go through the stages but we do all every one of us including our, our people that we love that have it are going to experience it somewhat differently and I think we just need to be more mindful of that and I think that administrators and moderators have to be able to set the tone in their group. Because if you give somebody an inch, everybody's gonna take a mile and it's gonna change the way that your group is going. I, I've seen that too many times. So that's, that's my take on it. You, you kind of have to set the tone because otherwise it could turn into a, just a, a complete bitch fest. <laughs> can I say that? <laughs> yes, you can. Let's see what you <laughs> We just say what it is, you know. Um, you see, I'm, I haven't been a caregiver for a long time, so part of me, I, I would wonder if when you have new people coming on board, if they could introduce themselves. Do they introduce themselves and say, you know, my husband or my wife or my husband or my mother or my father was just been diagnosed with Louis Bonner? Yeah, they, they do. They, most always, most people always do give some kind of, we always try to give them a welcome no matter what yeah. group it's in, yeah. but they, they don't always tell us or they don't always ask, they don't always know the questions that they want to ask. They might ask a specific because it's happening that day and then they might, you might not hear from them again for a few days. And so if they don't keep up with a group and follow the different things that go on, they miss a lot too. I don't think there is an easy fix. It's just that there's a lot of problems that Bessie and I have, have both been able to see. Mm -hmm. Well, can I just make a suggestion? Is there any time in these groups to ever do surveys, or, you know, survey questions on, you know, who is, um, who is on the, who's on this group and um, are they interested in, I'm, I'm just going to say like Alzheimer's or vascular or Lewis. Do you ever do anything like that so you can get a, 
really feel for what is actually what these people I have it because my, my group is a, a strictly a, a caregiver support group and it can be a caregiver for any kind of an ailment so I have people that don't have dementia that are you know they're caregivers for, for non dementia non Alzheimer's patients people mm -hmm. Well, Bethany maybe you have to think about how you can adjust these groups for um, seasoned caregivers or new caregivers on um, what exactly, do you give any hints on what kind of questions you, maybe these people may need to ask, but they're not sure how to ask it? Because they're all new at this. There's a lot of people that don't ask the right questions, but um, just do you add as admins do you come on and you know like give a little bit of a uh, comment about what this group is and if you have a questions on Louis body do you give some examples of kind of questions that you think they may be looking for because they don't know what they're looking for i don't know if i'm going around this wrong or right but i seem to think that maybe some sort of more communication in, in from the admins in the group of what they're what this group is entailed with. I know people are coming in and asking questions, but I, I, I tend to think there's probably just a little, maybe something else that's missing that these people don't realize. Or maybe suggest some books to read or something. I'm just grasping at straws here, so I hope you don't, you hope you two don't mind, that's all. No, no, no. Oh. Uh, in, in my group, which is not specific to dementia patients, I do offer a lot of different educational things. And I just asked the group a few days ago, do they want uh, in, a, in, a, in a file, you know, in a, in a Facebook group, they, there's a file system. And, and I can start posting things in there, generalized things about different disease processes, which I will probably be doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know about Betsy if, if you've even had a chance to think about things like that or not in in your group, Betsy. I haven't. Uh, my group basically just started in February, and some people are not caregivers anymore. They are past caregivers. Some don't have um, anyone with dementia. They just want to learn. Some people just want to uh, be inspired. Some people don't even participate, and that's okay. They could look at a post. If reading a post helps them, that's fine. I just ask that, and I don't have that many rules. So people be kind, no bullying, uh, no judgment. Mm -hmm. And if they do, then they will be uh, found out. I haven't said that so far I haven't had too much of a problem someone thought and they're no longer in the group thought that every time I did a <laughs> chat I was talking about them and mm -hmm. I was except the one time when they asked me to address the problem they even PM me can you please talk about this so I did yeah and I just say one thing that Sue Fernandez and I were talking about. Sue Fernandez is like you, Christina, very good on resources, right? And she gives, and she gives a wealth of them. She really does. And so what we're thinking about is creating a spreadsheet with all different types in alphabetical order, in chronological order, about different things, different resources, you know, like contacting, you know, your Medicare, or is there a, um, a aging center that you can talk to? I'm just throwing those up as examples because she gave some good examples today. Yeah, so, that's that's what I what I was talking about. Like in my group, is that if you put that all on a spreadsheet of some kind, you can put that in the files so right. that people can go that file yeah. and then see whatever is logged there. You know. Yeah. I mean, but but Sue also does post a lot of very helpful things, even not just about resources, but about um, different kinds of dementia. You know, I oh, think yes, Sue does. and I both post a lot. Yeah. So if this is how you're going to evolve with your groups and stuff is to find out what the need is. Like we found out like for the need for resources, this, it, it, the stuff was phenomenal about nonprofits that have, you know, used, you know, walkers and wheelchairs, you know, so she gave a place to contact and some of them are nationwide. Right. So those information, that information is important. So I'm figuring that maybe if I do like a little spreadsheet or something, you know, and, and post it, 
and um, and so you know give people a chance to find something. I'm not sure what they're going to be looking for, but they may find that one thing on that spreadsheet. But again, I said well, I, I said to I said to Supernandis, oh my God, it has to be an alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> so you something. But you see how you're working through this, you know, so you'll be able to, you're going to fine tune things as you two go on, along and even Sue Fernandez and stuff. And look what, look what they're going to, look what uh, Masha Burr is doing with the YouTube channel. It, I mean, it's going to have a subdivision to a subdivision to a subdivision to find things, you know. But as far as mm -hmm. I'm going to get off track here, because you're talking about your caregivers, but this is still information for them, you know. Well, they definitely all need it, no matter no matter where they're coming from. I mean, you can be a caregiver for a long time and still need more help or, or resources. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You I know. Agree. Yes, totally agree. On that. Yes, you know. Um, I, it, did I miss? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take over a little bit. I let you girls go. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. That's fine. <laughs> Beth, Bethy, chime in. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I really appreciate, Christina, you posting your information on my Kick Alzheimer's Ass Movement. I appreciate Sue posting her information because right now I don't have the time to look for right. links. I mean, I just don't. I'm like if I could read posts sometimes. <laughs> the, um, my time is severely limited. Yeah. And so I appreciate everyone who does. Uh, pitch in and, and help. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people misread what is written, the written word. Sometimes it doesn't come off like if you were talking to somebody and it gets misinterpreted. And I think that's a big problem too. And not just, that's just in a lot of groups. And you do have people who just like to cause trouble. There's Oh. Betsy, have you had people that don't like to ask old caregivers, the ones that aren't caregiving anymore, do they feel like they, they don't belong there with present day caregivers? I think some people who have dementia feel like they don't belong in a support group because they don't want to hear caregivers venting about who had dementia it made me feel bad. and I wish more people with dementia would join groups and tell us how they feel so we could learn from them. I think some older caregivers feel they have nothing to offer because maybe their loved one died 20 years ago, but they still do. You still went through that experience and you still have a story. Yeah. That's a while ago. Excuse me, I gotta go. Um, I mean, I'm still connected. I just got to get Matt. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, you know what? We're coming to the end anyway. So um, we can, each one can say something for the end and I'll stop the interview. Or, or... Um, sit down, Matt. Live TV. For, I mean, not radio, folks. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Life of a caregiver. <laughs> so do you want to, I mean. You know, I, Jean, Jean, as always, I want to thank you for, for allowing us to have this. And I think that this Zoom was a, a great idea. And yes. I'd like to do it again with you oh, and Jesse. Yeah. That yeah. would be wonderful. That would be uh, I think. Can I, make I think there are some, can I make one recommendation? Because there's yeah. echoes going on, um, I'm, I'm talking from my laptop, so I don't think I'm echoing. Uh, but if you, hear, if you can get earbuds, that would help. It would help immensely. I may have some extras. I'll look around, and if I do, I'll ship them off to you. No, I, I've got some. It's just that I wasn't expecting my laptop to yeah, go down on. It, so this is, this is computer land. The computers do what they want to do. They're the ones yeah. that are ruling us, really. You know. But what do you think about continuing this again on on phase two? Say, what do you think about this? I would like it very much. Okay. Me too. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So. Um, you, you want to give some words of wisdom before I uh, before I just dis stop the, the recording? Me? Uh, yeah. Yes, you. Either one. Either one. <laughs> Go, uh, Betsy. <laughs> I think that seasoned caregivers need to be a little, maybe a little more patient with the newbies. 
Don't take it for granted. They know basic information because they don't, and that's why they joined the group because they are looking for information. They're just overwhelmed with, like we were at first with the diagnosis and looking for direction and guidance. That's my words of wisdom. Thank you, Jeannie, for having me. Thank Thanks you, Lucy. And your turn. Thank you. Okay. I'm uh, gonna... I, that, that's all. That's good. No, no, go ahead. Say what you're going to say. That's fine. Don't worry. Oh, I, I agree with Bessie that I think that uh, sometimes, you know, because we have a mixture of people in, in a, at different stages that they're coming in, um, I think everybody needs to be a little bit more patient and tolerant with everyone. I, I, I think that was hot when I was saying we need to set the stage or the, the tone for our groups. I, I think that's why, because otherwise, if you give people uh, the possibility to lead on their own, it it doesn't always go somewhere pleasant. And so then they, they, they're they short with newcomers. Right, I agree. Um, before I close, um, to contact you, Christina, your uh, Facebook page on, on, if they want to, if yes. anyone wanted to contact you, your Facebook page. Yeah, uh, Christina Turner, or they can email me, Esox Pike at live.com. Okay, Betsy? They could contact me on my, uh, Facebook page, Betsy E. Wurzel, W-U-R-Z-E-L. Also, kick Alzheimer's ass movement. Hashtag kick Alzheimer's ass movement. <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you, both of you. This is like the maiden voyage. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say to Masha Burr, this was the, the um, what is it? The raft is launched. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you both for coming on. This was a great experience for us. And as we go along, we'll, be, we'll do much better and more. And, and maybe we'll get some feedback on things. But I want to thank you both. This is Judy White from Social Connection on Passionate Real Talk Radio. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening. I'm watching now, watching, not listening. Thank you. <laughs>